Case simulations are a brand new digital teaching tool designed for today's digitally native college students. Students control their own businesses and learn key business and marketing concepts in their college classes. Learn more today at www.knowledgematters.com slash podcast. Welcome to The Driven Entrepreneur, where we sit down with visionaries, trailblazers, and entrepreneurs and discover why and how they do what they do. We'll get the backstory, plus plenty of life and business lessons along the way. Here's your host, Matt Browning. Hey, this episode is brought to you by my very own NLP practitioner course. I've been teaching Neuro Linguistic Programming, or NLP, for nearly 15 years. It is the most powerful tool for communication on the planet, and it can be yours today. For a very limited time, I'm giving away my entire NLP course workbook for free. Go to nlpwithmatt.com. All the patterns, all the tools, and the techniques of NLP in the complete course workbook, the same one that we use to teach our live certification classes, yours free. NLPwithmatt.com. Get it today. Let's get back to the show. Welcome back to The Driven Entrepreneur. It's Matt Browning again every single week. Of course, I'm here for you and it's free. You're not paying for it. You just want great stories. I know you. I know you. You want great stories and you want, I don't know, inspiration positive messages. You want to learn something? Well, I try to bring that every single week. And this week we have a brand new twist, something I've never done before. We have a teenage entrepreneur. That's right. My guest this week is Sean Swick. He's a high school student who speaks to other high school students and young adults about how to be more positive, happy, strong, and productive. Uh, He has some very overcoming stories of his own, but without any further ado, I want to welcome him. Sean, how are you there? And welcome to the show. Yes, I'm right here. Thank you. Thank you. Good to be here. Hey, man. You know, we met at at an event earlier in the year, um, quite a while ago, but it was one of the last big live kind of hoorah events before that whole pandemic thing started going down. And uh, you were, you pitched, you know, to be on shows and you're starting your own podcast and you're out there doing a bunch of things. And I just remember seeing you and thinking, I, I don't, I, it almost is going to sound egotistical, but I remember seeing a lot of me in you because at 17, I had done a huge turnaround in my life. I changed everything. I got sober. I, I went back to school. I, I had a huge shift. And I remember thinking I felt very different. Do you feel like a quote, normal 17 year old kid? Or do you feel like sometimes you're on the outside looking in or you're, you know, like you don't quite relate to some of your contemporaries? Sure. Uh, that's a good point. And I mean, good for you for that big turnaround around that age. I do feel very different. And sometimes that's um, kind of a bad thing, I think. But overall, it's, you know, I'm just a teenager. I'm just a teenager. I do teenage yeah. things. I'm a teenager. Yeah. yeah. And, and you're obviously a super positive person. Can we talk a little bit about what my, the biggest curiosity I have for wanting you to interview you on this show is, you know, I have a nine-year-old son. So I'm very, very into, I I guess, you know, parenting and leadership parenting, meaning I know he needs to be his own person, but I want to try to influence and and help him up and lead him in a way that's going to best support him. Of course. Um, So I'm very interested in how you're a great kid has turned into a great young man and how the heck does that happen? (laughs) I think we can have the, the best intentions as a parent and have it blow up in our face or have the worst intentions and they still overcome anyway. What was life like growing up for you when you're a young kid? Are are your mom and dad involved? Um, How are you growing up? Is it easy, hard? What were some of the themes in your household growing up? My parents have been split up since I was really little. So I've always had two houses, but overall I was probably the happiest kid I've ever seen um, just growing up. And then as a teenager, I faced some hardship, but my parents were always there and understanding. And that's probably the biggest reason why I'm who I am today. So when you said I'm just kind of a happy kid, do you feel like, is this just like a personality trait? Like I know some, you know, some babies, right? They're just like, I'm a happy baby. And other ones <laughs> kind of scoff a little more at the world. Did you just, what was the personality like as a kid? If you went to the playground or something around the other kids, 
Did you play with a lot of people? Were you super social? Did you smile? Were you trying to make people happy? Did you think things through a lot? Were you engineering? Tell me a little bit about your personality style and, uh, and what you were like as a kid. I mean, I wasn't positive per se. I was just happy. And there's a huge difference between the two. And there was no problems in my life ever. So I didn't really need to be positive. It was just all great. Like my biggest problem was, you know, what kind of cereal am I going to have in the morning? Um, so I was just happy all the time. If I went to the park, for sure, I was super smiley. And although I, I was, um, I had a little bit of social anxiety, I was still trying to make other people smile and talk to everyone. That's kind of how I grew up. So as you're growing up that way, then you go into junior high and high school and you start facing some of your own inner shifting and some of your, like the inner demons, but you also had a lot of external experiences. And and one in particular that really just grabbed me and I thought, man, I have to talk to this, this young man more. You had an experience of, um, of death at your school of a, a fellow student taking his own life. Can you take us through that? I don't know that day or that experience. And what happened, but also what happened for you and the other kids around how the school dealt with things. For sure. Um, well, I mean, it was a day like any other, really. I'm um, just a high school day. And at lunch, I, I was playing soccer with a lot of my friends. And for me, that was just a great time. We were all smiling, um, happy. But we didn't even realize there was a kid in my school who I didn't know, but I saw him around. I spoke to him a couple of times since I'm in a small school. He was like an acquaintance. And he literally took a rope from his locker. Um, brought it behind the school and hung himself right there. And everybody knew this kid was dealing through some stuff, but it was overlooked and nobody really thought to help him or anything like that. And the kid died that day and it was, it was really, really sad and unfortunate. But even after that occurred, you know, of course there was grieving and whatever, and teachers um, talked about it, but nothing was done at all, really, which I find just so sad. And when you say nothing was done at all, do you mean nothing was done about that type of situation that led yeah. to his decision and how a future, someone else in the future might make the same terrible decision? Yeah, there was no prevention. You know, all, all schools have like a guidance counselor or something, but that person doesn't, I, I don't want to say always, but my school and I've been to several schools, they don't necessarily seek out to help others. It's kind of like, if they come to you, you'll kind of offer the same piece of advice as you give everybody else. And sometimes that's just not enough. That kid needed more and obviously others do. And the system to offer them that was not put in place. Teachers barely spoke about it. Um, You know, my sister who's at the same school didn't hear about it until a while after, just because it was so avoided. Wow. It's almost, I mean, swept under the rug almost in a way. Yeah. Which is unfortunate, like so terrible. Well, it's and, not and something you want to talk about, but no, still. it's something nobody wants to, to talk about because it's uncomfortable and it's painful and it's scary and it's all those things. But that's the exact reason why for sure, like we, we need to process and go through those. What, what was looking back? And I know this wasn't a terribly long time ago, obviously. Um, no. What was your processing like? Did you, did you process with your parents? Did you just, were you was it easy enough for you to go, well, that happened and that's terrible. And if, you know, can you get through these things? I don't know, maybe easier. Did you have a hard time with it? What is that like for you? And do you feel like you, I don't know, are you doing okay? This was three years ago before I started doing all this positivity stuff and helping myself really. So at that moment, I was still fragile to it a little bit. Um, It definitely upset me and it made me it opened my eyes really. It was an eye opener. I looked around and I saw a lot more people who needed a lot more help um, that I never thought about before that occurred. But of course, I spoke to my parents about it because I needed the support along with probably a lot of people in his entourage. Yeah. And, and this is, would you say this is kind of one of the, the, the moment when from that point forward, did you right away start going, okay, hang on, something's broken in the world, something's going yes. on. Why does a teenager make a choice, take their own life? And did you immediately start looking for like solutions? Were you looking for meaning? What, how did it feel and what led you down the path of, I want to start reading books and start to figure some things out? That was definitely a big turning point because I, 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 yeah, I wondered, I mean, how could life situation be so bad that you would take your own life? But again, I I grew up with no issues um, whatsoever. And I kind of pondered on that question for a little while. 
Um, but I never got an answer until I moved away from home and lost all my friends and everything I ever had. And I went through some hardships of my own, just dealing with the whole thing. And I became extremely sad. Uh, I, I mean, <laughs> I ran away from home for like a solid day. <laughs> my grades went down. Um, I wasn't as social. I wasn't as happy. And then that was the major turning point where I finally understood. And then I started researching about it. I read books. I started with a book called The Happiness Advantage by Sean Aker. I put up a blog. Um, I spoke to my parents. I spoke to the guidance counselor. And then once I got myself back to normal, I just kept reading it. And I've been really passionate about this whole positivity stuff since then. When, when, when you moved, can you give us a little, maybe give me some advice on, um, cause like my family, we, we already, we move a lot and, you know, my wife and I, you know, in our family, we, we serve a lot in ministry and sometimes that takes us, we go different places and we've moved across the country and we move neighborhoods and homes. Can you give some advice to us if, if we're going, if there's going to be a move, so you got to pull a kid out of school and all of a sudden their friends are behind. And let's say, you know, there isn't a choice. You're doing that because you have to, or what have you, how could, how could a, parents better help their kids in that process? Okay. Um, I would, I mean, of, of course it's hard to get through teenagers, but A, I would tell them to focus on the good things. And I have a couple tricks um, for that, that I can list for if you want. And B, I, I want. It's, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, I have, okay. Little things like every time you walk into a room, just mentally in your head, point out your three favorite things in that room. And that kind of trains your brain to register the positives before anything else. And this is hugely important when you're facing a new environment and B, I would, um, make sure that they're, they get surrounded by the right people. And to do that, I know it's hard to reach teenagers, but set up like a meeting where you go to coffee once a week and then talk about progress or change or whatever. Cause I know sometimes those conversations get overlooked in the home. Right. Oh, so, so this is like, you know, for a parent, you can just say, Hey, yes. like, let's go, let's go to coffee. We'll hang this. out. We'll sit down and we'll just, you know, have a catch up. Yeah. Which was my dad did this. And I, I thought it was, I mean, I was like, eh, whatever at the time, but now that I think about it, it was brilliant. And that was really a moment where we actually had that conversation where I told him everything. And that's where he could actually help me. Wow. And and let's come back to that original question too, about, you know, moving to a new place. So let's say, you know, like I, we move, my son's 15 years old and he's having a tough time and he's starting to feel withdrawn a little bit and not talking as much and clearly not being happy. How looking back for what, what you did, cause you brought yourself through there. What's the role of a parent for you from just your perspective? I'm not saying this is the right or wrong way to go, but from your perspective, would you have wanted your parents more involved, less involved? Hey, hands off. We're here. We love you, but you got to figure it out. Or would you want them to intervene in if so, what way? Can, what's your perspective on kind of parents helping a teen through a hard time? I think number one thing for parents to understand, um, some parents will just make it worse by being like, why are you like this? Yes. Um, so that's number one. Number two, they need space. It's hard to get to teenagers and they, you know, they become a person of their own. And that's speaking about me too. So yeah, you got to give them space, but you still got to be there for them. So again, how do you accomplish that, that practically from a teen's perspective? From a teen's pr perspective? Oh, well, like from your perspective. So say, you know, I'm, I'm yeah. a parent. How do I accomplish that? Because that makes perfect sense to me. I'm like, I want you to know that I'm here for you. I'm fully supportive, but I also want to step back and give you your space. Is there well, again, anything to maybe a mistake to avoid that I think I'm doing that, but I'm actually not? Does that make sense? Yes. A uh, big one is if your kid or teenager comes home from school and he doesn't look happy, don't ask, how was your day? Just don't. <laughs> That's, that's not going to help. <laughs> How was your day? Don't you want to talk? No, I don't. No, I no. At that moment, especially, he probably doesn't want to talk. So sit down with the teenager and schedule a time where he can actually talk. And because I know at home we get busy and whatever. So schedule. So scheduling a time that's not and that that you know I'm seeing that again. Uh, Val's nine, man. I'm seeing that with a nine year old where 
if I pick him up from school and he's in the back seat, it's like, Hey man, how was your day? Like, of course I want to ask him things. Of course. But his answer is always, it was fine. Yeah. Or You're I don't not know. Get like, what did you do? I don't know. And then it finally struck, it, it hit me. I'm like, Oh, I need trans. Like when I finish, even if I'm working upstairs, like I am now and I come downstairs, I need time to transition from work mode to home mode. And I don't want, I feel like I'm assaulted if my wife's like, Hey, what about this? What about that? So just giving transition time, really, yes. really great tip. Um, don't talk right after school, give them some space and then connect and make some time later on. Yeah, that's exactly. Okay. Very cool. Um, is there a, a really obvious way that, that we can know that as a parent, we're pushing too much or trying to be too close or I don't know, clingy or whatever, overcompensating. I don't know if any of that resonates with you, but is there a kind of a, a, a trigger or like, Ooh, if I see this happening, I know it's time to back off a little bit and give some space. As far as I'm concerned, it depends on the individual. Of course, you know, some children are more clingy to others. Some need more space than others. And same thing goes with parents. But Good as soon answer. as you're getting no response or just fine, I don't know. Fine. That's probably where you want to back off. Really, really good point. Um, what are you, so you got into a lot of positivity work now and yes. read some great books. You are starting a new podcast. Yes. I'm plugging it. I don't care. We're plugging this because it's, it's going to be such a, such a good show. I know you, you've put out, um, uh, it's called Positivity School Podcast. And you can find out more about that and subscribe uh, to 17-year-old Sean Swick at Sean. That's S-H-A-W-N. Swick is S-W-I-C-K. And we'll have that in the show notes. If you're listening to this on-demand platform, if you're on the radio course, head over to The Driven Entrepreneur at anywhere you get podcasts and the on-demand version will be available for you. And in the show notes, we'll have all that there. But go to seanswick.com. And dude, you got, you got a website up. You got uh, the starting of the podcast up. You can subscribe to it. You have uh, articles about positivity, about raising self-esteem, about setting goals, making decisions. I mean, dude, you are on this. What, so what was the age then you said that was three years ago. What was the age that you went right? Was it right away? You went into this. So you're almost three years in, you've been going down this road or is this a little more recent that you really started? I don't know if taking it more seriously is the right verbiage, but when did you really say like, yeah, man, I'm about this stuff. I'm about positivity. <laughs> I knew I've been about it since I started reading it. So, you know, about two years, but I'm really starting to put out content and trying to get out there for the past couple months. So this is getting it out there is very new. Wow. So, I mean, all these articles and the podcast coming up, everything you've been doing, this is only within the last few months. Yes. Bro. I mean, first off, congrats, man. That is awesome. Thank you. Um, super <laughs> supportive of that. Um, I know part of your positivity, of course, you got this, this incident and what you, what you've been through with watching, not just that one, uh, classmate, but others have had hardships and struggles and teen depression. There's a lot of, like you said, there's issues that are being swept under the rug and maybe intentionally or not. Maybe we don't know how to deal with it. Maybe sometimes it is swept under the rug intentionally. Um, what area in, in positivity do you really want to focus on and be known for? I mean, I know it's kind of, it's the no brainer to say, Hey, I want to help teens. And I know that's part of what you do. Is that what you see kind of long term? Do you want to move into that as you turn 18, 19, 20? Or do you have anything else on the horizon you want to be focusing on? I, I mean, positivity, I see it as a, as a mindset. And I really want to help people achieve mindset that helps them attack adversity or bad situations better. But I focus on teenagers because they're the ones that are least equipped with it. They're going mm -hmm. through a lot of change, you know, school pressure, social pressure, um, the exam pressure, the parental pressure. And I feel like they're the ones that need it the most, which is why I focus on them. But I want to help everybody achieve a mindset where they can go into adversity well-equipped and happy. That's a good point you brought up that, that it's about the, the equipping. And yeah, like I, I, I would agree, you know, like the, the younger we are, generally the less equipped uh, we're going to be to deal with adversity when it happens. And look, you know, being a parent doesn't mean that, you know, just because you were able to, uh, copulate and have a child does not mean that all of a sudden you're equipped as a leader and you're <laughs> equipped as a positivity coach and you know exactly what to do in, in overcoming adversity in situations. So parents aren't going to be necessarily any more equipped, you know, than, than the kids. Very true. What, 
Is there anything that's different that maybe a teen is going to need versus a young adult or an older adult when it comes to adversity? Do you see that as different or is human nature, human nature to you? Humans are humans, of course, but the kinds of situations that a parent versus a teenager are going to be in are different. And then teenagers always have parental support, which can vary when it comes to an adult. But in general, it's, we all face problems. What would you, what would you say to, to, uh, to someone that, that says a teen's problems are smaller or less important and hear out what I mean by this. Cause I don't <laughs> think any of us really believe it because as we just said, right? Like this is a, a real thing. And if you're, you know, if you're going through abuse, you're going through depression, that's the same depression that anyone else has. And it can have the same unfortunate permanent solution to a temporary problem. But I guess I mean more like, say my kid comes home and he's 16 and goes, oh my gosh, you know, I have a pimple and he's depressed about it or really sad or something about a dance or you know, something that, you know, as you get older, you look back and go, hey man, sure. that's not that big of a deal. And one day you're going to look back and realize it's not a big deal. However, okay. in their world, it's a big deal now what would you say about that? Or do you have a, is there a good approach? Cause I'm a parent. I want to understand my kids model the world. You know, I want, I don't want to belittle him or diminish what he's going through because we do have different lives and different models. Do you have any advice to help a parent not just say, Oh yeah, I know it's a big deal to you, even though it's really not any advice on how to really engage and, and, and respect how big of a deal things are for the kids. I mean, of course, try to understand. Um, being a teenager can be like the best time of your life, but it comes with a ton of change and challenges. And even if it's not a big deal to you, it could be a huge deal to them because it's brand new and they're not as equipped as you can be. And if they're really focused on it, then it's going to be a massive problem to them. And of course, if you can't understand just show them that and not like, you know, don't do it in a way that's, oh, that's stupid, but be like, I don't understand, but I'm here for you if you need. Don't fake it. That's a really great phrase too. Like, look, I don't understand. I, I say that in my, in my marriage quite often because I'm like, look, <laughs> because we process things differently. You know, my wife's going to feel yeah, emotions deeper and I'm going to have thoughts deeper. And so sometimes it's like, I'm like, Honestly, I really am not getting it, but I really want to get it and I'm here yes. for you. And it's just not making someone wrong is such a, a right way to be, you know, would you agree with that? For sure. Yeah. Yes. Um, moving along then, you know, if, uh, what do you see in your future? What are, what are some things as so you start in the podcast? What are, what are some other plans, goals that are in your mind that are along this positivity and maybe even now turn this into a business? What are you wanting to do more of in the future? I want to reach more people. A, so talking at schools, talking at events, um, growing a podcast, grow my website. That's definitely priority number one. And then from there, starting a show of some kind, probably, but honestly, I'm not sure. You know, I kind of take it one step at a time. Starting a show. Tell me about that. Well, I, I, I mean, I've... I'm taking the podcasts I have and I'm using it. I'm using them on YouTube and things like that with some cool editing whatsoever. But if I can get more into the YouTube game, that could be cool. But again, I'm focused on reaching more people right now. Yeah, I should, I should connect you. In fact, if you want, I will. There's a good friend of mine. If you're listening to this, Ricky, I'm shouting out to you. Ricky Powell, uh, <laughs> he produced at NBC for like 25 years. And he got tired of the negative media out there. And he wrote a book called Happiness Rocks. And, uh, and you know, also did, like uh, for, for quite a while, he produced these shows, uh, Smile TV. And basically the idea is how to have some positive programming out there. So it might be a, I don't know, just a really, really good conversation with a guy like that. For sure. Um, and because that sounds like, you know, again, we, we need more of that in the world. We need more yes. positive. And it's finally starting to happen. You know, it's finally starting yeah. to happen. There's, uh, what's that show? It just came out with like Melissa McCarthy and Ellen DeGeneres uh, produces it. Someone is going to beat me up on this because I'm not saying the name. 
I forget too. <laughs> uh, kids, it's like outstanding kids, basically, and it's just this. It's nothing but feel good and positivity, and and kids doing extraordinary things. And you, and at the end, it's like there was no drama. I just felt really good, yeah. and I believe that there's positivity in the world again. Um, That's great. What's your take on dark versus light, positive versus negative, the way the world is, the way the world should be? Um, do you think it's something that, you know, it's always going to be this way, but we're going to do our part to choose which side we're on? Or do you feel like it's more the, hey, if we all do enough of this, we will change things and the world will be a positive place, so to speak. I know it's not black or white, but kind of what's your 17 years on the, on the earth? What's your approach towards the world condition? I mean, to me, the world is a positive place. It could, of course, use a lot more positivity, though. If you look at the news, for example, like right now, it's full of this COVID-19 stuff, of course. But any news channel will broadcast more negativity than positivity because we're just wired to pay more attention to that. And the news media and the news and the media knows that. So yes, there's a lot of negativity going around and there's always going to be challenges and problems. But if we work on it hard enough, we can not overcome them because they still exist, but just face them properly and well in order to stay happy. Well said. And that's really insightful too, that the that we're wired for that. And I like that yeah. you, you mentioned, it's not that we're wired for negativity, but you said we're wired to pay attention to it, yes. which makes perfect sense. Because if I have a, if someone comes to my cave with a positive message, it's like, yay. But if they come to my cave with a negative message, I might have to get up. I got to move. I got to do something. I got to defend myself. <laughs> exactly. I got to attack. Um, so negativity or negative messages um, it certainly makes sense to me that we be hardwired uh, to be ready to respond to them where positive messages may or may not need a response. Hence, we need even more positive messages out there. Um, last couple of questions, Sean, I'll let you get rolling, man. Um, I'm awesome. sure you got some studying to do. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. School's out, man. School's out. It is. Um, what, you know, if you got, if you got the world's ears, what do you want people to know? How, let's just say, you know, I feel like, you know what, I want to make a difference too. I love what Sean's doing. I want to make a difference. I want to help teens. I would like to end teen suicide. I'd like to end teen depression. I want to do something to help. Um, what do you wish more people did more of? Tell people you're there for them. I mean, you know, it's, it's kind of like a duh thing, but, but it's not, it's really not. And sometimes people need to hear it. And sometimes just that little act will have a great effect. So just make sure if you're talking to anybody, make sure they know you're there for them. So you heard it, you heard it here uh, from the number one teen happiness positivity coach in the world, in my opinion, <laughs> at least. Maybe, I don't know what the, if that's objective or not, but I think you're number one, man. Um, follow Appreciate if you it. want some positive messages and, and see how a teen goes about being positive. Uh, make sure you follow Sean on Instagram at sean.swick. Again, that's S-H-A-W-N dot... Swick, S-W-I-C-K. So Sean.Swick on Instagram and go over to SeanSwick.com and you can get uh, check out some of these really cool, positive uh, blog articles. And check out you know, some of these articles. Again, Be More Positive Today, Raising Self-Esteem, uh, Setting Good Goals, The Process, Making Better Decisions. What is positivity in the first place? I mean, you like there is some great content and you can get it all. It's free at SeanSwick.com. Um, Sean, final question for you, man. Um, sure. you know, you've been through 17 years on the earth. You got a heck of a lot more in front of you than you do behind you. Um, what do you want at this point? Realizing of course, things will change every month, but today, what do you feel like you'd want your legacy to be? Make people happy. Well, not happy, positive. And you know, obviously that's what I'm doing, but What's the difference it's, between positivity and happiness? I know you mentioned that earlier. I don't think we hit that. I'd love to hear you, your, your take on that. Happiness is the feeling you get when you're on a roller coaster or when you accomplish a great thing. Whereas positivity is a mindset and you can be positive throughout bad times. Whereas you can't really be happy during bad times. Positivity, what it does, it's, it just allows you to face bad times better and come out of them in a much better situation than if 
you didn't have that mindset. So you can be, you, it's hard to be happy during bad times. But yes. You can't always be happy, but you can always be passive positive, man. That's a, I couldn't, I, could, I literally couldn't have said that better myself. <laughs> um, Sean Swick, man. Thank you so much for coming on the show. I appreciate you. Of course. Thanks for having me. All right, guys, that's the show for this week. And uh, what a great message and a needed message right now from teen happiness, <laughs> happiness, teen productivity and positivity coach, Sean Swick. Find out thing, uh, everything you want at seanswick.com and seanswick on Instagram. Um, follow this teen helping to raise the positivity levels of other teens and young adults. Uh, so, so exciting to, to see a young man like this making a difference, making an impact in the world. Hey, and if you like stories like this and you want more guests like this, let me know. Pop off a DM at Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, wherever you follow. You can follow me at Matt Browning on social media and let me know what you want to hear, what you want to see on this show. Uh, and we'll get you more of that. As always, we're here every single week with a driven entrepreneur, an innovator, a trailblazer, or someone that just generally is making a difference in the world. And that was my guest this week. I'll see you next week. Make sure you enjoy the weekend. Stay in, stay out, do whatever you got to do. But no matter what you do, stay driven. I'll see you next week. All right. Later.